used to make more than 350 calls to countries like Syria, Lebanon, Pakistan, and a phone bill that topped 12 thousand dollars. Now she phoned Rogers Wireless as any one of us would likely do, told them the situation, but then she was told she would be responsible for paying all of that money on on the bill because the the theft report didn't come until after the charges were all racked up on the phone. And to add insult to injury, Heather, the late fees were added onto this phone bill, so then it topped in total 14 thousand dollars. Well, her being a law professor, she undertook a lot of research and took this up essentially as a cause. And she uncovered some pretty startling things, including a cell phones that can be cloned, which is when your phone number and your security code are basically um, inputted into another cell phone. And from there, someone can make calls to just about well to anywhere they want to. And you end up getting dinged for all of those charges. And what the research found was that even Rogers executives like Ted Rogers himself had his phone cloned and a number of calls with some terrorist links it is alleged that uh, were made on Ted Rogers phone okay so this is now of course a public relations nightmare for Rogers wireless this makes it all the way to the top and apparently Ted Rogers himself has offered to pay that phone bill and all of the other charges that were incurred as a result of this uh, debacle that Susan Drummond went through Drummond says all right, but on one condition, you have to come over to my place for tea and an earful on what customers actually uh, really go through. And word has it, Heather, that uh, Ted Rogers has accepted. So tea with uh, Ted Rogers and Susan Drummond. And plenty of questions over that uh, over that snack, I'm sure. Absolutely. Uh, because it has, that story raised a lot of eyebrows, given us plenty of opportunity to ask questions, Maryvale, questions such as just how easy is it to fall victim to this scam and what can we do to protect ourselves? Because of course most of us have cell phones. Joining me now to answer these questions, Jonathan Richards, who's Chief Technology Officer with Harmony Mobile Networks and a former global networking consultant. Jonathan, thanks for being here today. No problem. Marivel said people are talking about this, people who are just following the story. What about inside the industry? How much of a buzz is this story causing? Well, I think it's caused quite a quite a stir because it, it, it brings a number of, uh, of issues to the forefront. and. Um, a combination of business process issues in terms of fraud control and the software which which a carrier which we as a carrier use to to analyze the calling patterns um, and then for people dealing with the specific technology that, that Rogers uses which is the global standard or GSM which right. stands for global system mobile that's that's a fairly big issue because we've gone through a couple of different security iterations with GSM technology and, uh, and obviously it, it's still not catching all of well, the situations we, we don't know all the details yet yes. but yeah absolutely it's, okay. it's not catching all of the situations and, and the bad guys are evolving and their methods are evolving and, and that might be the scary the scarier aspect thing about the of it let's just talk so Maybe some people are waking up this morning and, and hearing about cell phone cloning, the mm. name itself, for the first time. How does it work? How is someone able to clone my um, cell phone? Well, there's two, different, there's two different ways it can happen. One is using an, uh, monitoring the over-the-air messages, which are the, the, um, the information which your cell phone sends out to the network to tell the network, hey, I'm a cell phone and my, my unique identity number is 12345 or whatever. It's actually encrypted. And then the cell sends back a response saying, okay, you're allowed to make calls. Um, if someone intercepts that message and is able to decrypt that security message, they can then take that information and then clone it onto another phone. Now, you're not really cloning it onto a phone. You're actually cloning it onto um, what's called the subscriber identity module in GSM or a SIM. And um, we have one of those, one of those here. Teeny weeny case. cards. Well, a card. Okay. And, this, right. and then the second way it can be cloned is if someone can actually get physical access to the card, um, for example, you leave it in a hotel room or, or leave it in a taxi cab or something literally like that. Literally steals the, Lit the They literally card. can, well, they can take the card or copy the card in a, in a smart card reader, just as happened in the satellite industry a number of years ago. It became a prevalent form of fraud. The, 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 it was a big problem for the, for the business process. And, and the smart card is essentially everything about you as a subscriber, and it's stored in your phone. There's a little door, and you pop it open, and, and it can be popped out in a couple of seconds. Copying the card um, can be done in a couple of seconds. The, at issue is how long does it take to crack the security on, on the smart card? And with pow more powerful and powerful computers being extremely inexpensive, uh, different experts will give you a different opinion. We used to think it would take um, a matter of days, maybe weeks, to crack the security in a card. Now, um, some, some analysts in the industry believe this can be done in possibly a matter of minutes, possibly in, um, in the time that My it goodness. would take to take the card out of the phone, pop it into a computer. 15, 20 minutes, maybe an hour, and then 
and then you're and in business done. and it's So uh, obviously one of the new areas of concern about this whole phenomenon, which in and of itself is quite concerning. Mm -hmm. So as a consumer then, how do I protect myself from someone being able to do well, those things? The, well, I guess one is obviously the physical security. You're going to know if your phone has, has been, you know, if you've given your phone to somebody or if you've lost it in a cab, and you should report that right uh, away. as soon as it happens right away. And in fact, if you do lose your phone in something like that in a cab or in a coat check room in a club or something like that, I would probably I would encourage you to to go to if it's if it's a, a GSM provider like Rogers, which is the only one in Canada, um, ask for a new card, ask for a new smart card if if, if possible. Um, the other thing is that when you're traveling, there are certain places in the world where these over-the-air messages, um, at least people in our industry, the security guys have told us that these these are hot spots for the over-the-air type of cloning, and that's um, Israel, Eastern Europe, Pakistan, Dubai. Um, parts of the United States airports. There's not a lot you can do about that. I mean, if you want to be reached in those in 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 those countries or in those foreign destinations, it's a you're you probably going to yeah, yourself you, up to that yeah you're opening yourself up to that possibility. One thing you can do, however, is uh, buy a local buy a local SIM card if it's GSM. Um, a friend of mine was just in Pakistan and he purchased a local a card locally. It's a prepaid card. And um, among other things, it'll save you money on your cell phone bill because your roaming rate will be a lot less. Right. And um, pop that card in your phone, and, and it's a disposable card. So it stops them from having your true Absolutely. number and true information. Right. Thank you so much, Jonathan. It's obviously something we're going to be talking about more, and uh, thanks for raising the issue and no how to deal with it. Jonathan Richards, our guest in studio today. Just ahead here on CBC News Morning, we're going to tell you where you can get a very different read on the federal election campaign. We'll take a look at political blogs. Those